Bell, good job to come up with it, but it's an infield single for the youngster. The game kept me alive, brought me back to life. All the things I've been through in my life and laying in the hospital bed, it gave me something to, to dream about. It gives me a place for three hours a night. I, the rest of the world ceased to exist. I was a football player also, uh, playing in a, a playoff game in the Houston Astrodome. It was late in the game, uh, kind of benign, twisted ankle on a play. I really didn't think anything about it until afterwards, and where my ankle seemed to never get any better. Closer to Christmas, uh, I started developing some flu-like symptoms. Uh, it was in January. Over the course of a weekend, the symptoms were, were so terrible that on Sunday night, I, I told my parents I probably couldn't go to school the way I felt and sure enough uh, the next morning it was in pretty rough shape. I remember trying to make a phone call to my mom's school. She was a junior high teacher. And, you know, the next time I was aware of anything my, my mother was found me in, in her house in the hallway next to the phone. He took me to the hospital at that time and in a, in a matter of the next 24 hours they did some exploratory surgery on, on my ankle. Uh, I woke up in the hospital with a hole in my ankle, you know, the size of a softball. And, uh, when they got in there and they did another surgery, they found out that I had bone cancer. But the doctor came in and asked my parents to walk out in, into the hallway. And I couldn't hear the conversation, but I could hear my mom break down and, and just start crying. And I knew at that point, whatever information that, that the doctor was given, my parents was not good information. And shortly after that, my dad walked into the room and um, had a conversation with me and essentially told me that they were going to take me into surgery. They were gonna to have to make a decision whether or not they amputate my, my leg from the knee down. Uh, <laughs> and that's when, you know, I. I guess I kind of straight faced my dad and told him, I said, well, it's, you're not going to allow him to take my leg because I was going to be a major league baseball player. So that wasn't going to happen. Junior college at that time, you have a fall season. And I was having a really good fall. It was, you know, the, the old athleticism had, had come back. And, and Coach Sosby had told me that I wasn't going to play in the Sunday games. He was going to take a look at some other players. But later that evening, he called me at my apartment and, and told me that there was a, a scout with the New York Yankees, um, Deacon Jones, who, who wanted to see me play uh, a little bit more. I mean, it was a fifth inning. and, and there's a runner in third base. Uh, there's less than two outs. There was a hitter hit a fly ball, shallow fly ball to right field. So I chased the ball up the line. And in my mind, I would go up the line, catch the ball. I caught it. I immediately realized that I was not on the inside of the line. I was directly in the middle of the third base line. And the runner was coming directly at me. The runner decided that he was gonna to try to jump over the top of me. And when he did, his knee hit the top of my head with the entire force of his body. And, and three vertebrae were compressed, crushed, and, and kind of exploded outward. And at that moment, uh, laid motionless. Uh, and I just remember my dad looking down at me and I'm Look at him in his first question. He asked me, he said, you can't move, can you? And I was able to tell him no.
My wife and I had been married for a few years, and I got my opportunity to call her. And earlier in the day, I'd found, I'd walked by the front desk of Pirate City, and I'd picked up a little pocket schedule of the Major League season. And so we were talking on the phone, and I was making a joke. And I remembered I'd had that schedule and pulled that pocket schedule out, and, and I circled the date, July 23rd, going, hey, if I get called up by July 23rd, you know where where we're going to be the first road trip. And she goes, no, nah. it's like Houston. I'll be able to come home and we'll be able to see each other. And all this, we laughed. And I kind of put that uh, schedule back in, in, in my wallet. Fast forward to during the year, the night of the 22nd of July. And uh, I get on the phone and, and the voice on the other line says, Manny, how, how long have you been waiting for this phone call? And I'm like, huh. I said, well, if you're my wife, about 30 minutes. And we laughed, and you know, like, who is this? And he, and he said, well, this is Terry Collins. Uh, Don Slott got hurt, and uh, you're being called up to the big leagues. You're going to the big leagues tomorrow morning. July 23rd, uh, 1991. We were playing Atlanta. Bullpen phone rang, and uh, they told me that I was going to pinch hit for Doug Drabeck. I ran down, tried to find my bats. I only had two bats. Uh, you know, all the veterans. You know, play, play a joke on the rookie. They hit all my bats, my helmet, and I was facing Dan Petrie. Um, I barreled a baseball between uh, short and third. And kind of ironically enough, uh, the two things that had been, been taken away from me and for periods of my lifetime carried me uh, to an infield single, essentially. One ground ball headed for left field. Blouser, great play, long throw. He is safe. At the time, I felt like I had so many people with me, but yet, you know, in the, one, of, one of the loneliest spots because there was nobody that I had in my lifetime around me. Uh, but they were all there with me. I, I carried them with me. Great question. Um, pay attention. I think um, enjoy moments. Continue to to strive for um, great things, but take time to enjoy it, um, to have to go through all the things I went through to understand that every 24 hours we get is a, a great blessing. We don't give up on any day and to enjoy every day. <laughs> 